Rachel must have got him. Jacob is just heartbroken of losing Joseph. Oh, is he heartbroken. And then what happens after that? Joseph goes down to Egypt. He ends up serving in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife takes a liking to Joseph, but Joseph is a holy and upright man. And she wants to sleep with Joseph. And Joseph says, I can't do this. I cannot do this. I cannot sin against my Lord. I cannot sin against Potiphar. I won't do it. She goes, lie with me. No. And he starts to move away, and she takes, grabs him, and her clothes tear, and she goes to Potiphar and said, look, he tried to force himself on me, and he's thrown into prison. And there he is. So much for a dreamer, huh? He's in prison alone. He's in prison alone. And in prison... There are a couple of other guys in there with him who were in the service of Pharaoh. And one day they had dreams. And they said to Joseph, you know, they, Joseph said, why do you guys look so bad today? You're so downcast. Oh, we've had these dreams. Joseph, ah, oh, been there. <laughs> <laughs> I had dreams too. I had dreams too. And look at me. Well, I don't just take, keep your dreams to yourself. That's not what he says, does he? What, what were the dreams? They told him the dreams. They said, can you interpret? He says, the interpretation belongs to God. But here's the interpretation. For the first guy, he said, you're going to be restored to your post. You're going to be restored to your post. The guy goes, oh, great. And the other one said, well, I had a dream too. I had a dream too. Let me tell you my dream. Well, the interpretation of that was, you're not going to be restored to your post, but you're going to be killed. And just shortly after that, he was. The first guy was restored to the post, but Joseph said to him before he was restored, don't forget me. I'm here. Don't forget me. And then the story goes on. He was restored to Pharaoh's service, and guess what? He forgot. Have you ever felt like that? <laughs> Have you ever felt like that? Somebody who has the key to your life, it might be your boss, it might be someone else, it's like that person's the one with the key to my, my life, and they forgot, you know? That your whole life seems to rest on one person who doesn't always remember. <laughs> doesn't get it. Some people feel like that. That was Joseph. And then another dream takes place. Pharaoh has a dream and he's troubled by it. No one can give the interpretation. Suddenly, this guy that was restored to service says, ah, there was a guy in prison. How could I have forgotten? Joseph, he's a Hebrew. Bring him here. He interprets the dream. And the dream is interpreted that there's going to be seven fat years followed by seven lean years of famine. And Pharaoh says, that's it. Who can I get to be in charge of all this now? Who better but Joseph? So Joseph is raised up. He's raised up to number two behind Pharaoh in the land. And then what happens? By providence, Jacob's sons have to come down to Egypt. And what do they do? They need food. And through a series of events, Joseph, what does he do? He makes sure that they have repented. They come down. He says, where's your, do you have any more brothers? Oh, yeah, we got little Benjamin at home. And then, of course, one of our brothers is no more. And he's standing there looking at him. <laughs> and now let me tell you the key to it. The key to it is, is that he's waiting to see what Judah will do. And so he gets them into a situation where they have to bring Benjamin back to Egypt because he wants to know by this time, what are your thoughts about your father and have you repented about your attitude towards the youngest? You know that the youngest are important. John Paul II said you can tell a culture by how they treat the youngest. And so finally he gets into a position where it looks like Benjamin is caught stealing and he's going to have to give his life. And what does Judah say? <sighs> no, no, no. Take me. Take me. And so we go from Judah saying, sell him into slavery, to years later, take me. I will die. Total transformation. And then at the end in, uh, of Genesis, what do you have? You have the genealogies. You have the blessings of each tribe. And you'll notice in the genealogies at the end of the chapter, at the end of the book, You'll notice that Reuben, who is not sandwiched in between the others. <laughs> I just want to know if you're awake. He doesn't get the blessing. He doesn't get the blessing. And you'll notice that Simeon doesn't. Levi doesn't wear the pants in the family. <laughs> uh, 
Who gets the blessing? The fourth one, Judah. The lion of the tribe of Judah. The scepter will not depart from Judah. And next session, we will move on from there into the Egypt and Exodus period. <laughs>